Addition of so much reactivity is not easy, for unless the ejected control rod is very large and it is moved rapidly, the reactor will shut itself down by steam formation before the desired amount of reactivity has been added. Calculations showed that a rod worth 4% K effective should be ejected in less than two-tenths second to achieve the desired excess reactivity. Such a rod was used for the final experiment. It was 80% out of the reactor when peak power was reached. The minimum period reached was 2.6 milliseconds. To increase the severity of the experiment, it was run with the reactor water cold at 18 degrees centigrade. The results of the experiment were as expected. Most of the fuel plates were melted. The pressure resulting from the molten metal in contact with water burst the open reactor tank, carried away the control rod mechanism, and ejected the remains of the reactor core high into the air. These are closer views of the experiment. The film was partly fogged by radiation and the cameras stopped because of interruption of their electric power before the end of the explosion. The experiment will next be re-examined with the action slowed down by a factor of about 30. In the upper left-hand corner, one of the control rods can be seen flying out of the picture. The bright objects are believed to be fragments of the aluminum fuel plates, possibly burning in the air. The total nuclear energy released during this experiment was 1.3 times 10 to the 8th joules, and the maximum power was over 10 to the 7th kilowatts. Most of the fuel element fragments fell to earth within a radius of 200 feet around the reactor and there was no dangerous fallout at distances greater than a few hundred feet. 